sort of surreal um, to, to see the amount of people's talents and energies that have to come together to make this happen. I mean, I sat in a room by myself for several years and, you know, sang all the harmonies myself and did the orchestrations in my head and on my synthesizer and, and um, sang the girls' parts in falsetto and, and, you know, just imagined it all. And now that it's actually happening, I mean, you see the artistry of everyone else involved um, making it more bigger and more beautiful than I could ever imagine. It's, uh, it's humbling and, and it's, uh, um, it's a very moving experience for me to see it all come together. Uh, certainly, uh, I know what works, and you know it really is about getting rid of everything that it isn't, and and we are doing that. We're not done yet. I mean, we still uh, have pages of notes from Charlottetown that we're putting in to this production. So, but certainly, uh, you know, broad strokes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the piece has arrived, and. Uh, um, that's not to say I wouldn't change things or, you know, if, if I thought of something that I knew would make it better, I would put it in. I think the heart of the piece is about what it is to, to be home, to be home in your heart, to be home if that's about being with another person, if it's about a place a physical place or if it's about a state of being and and I think as someone who travels a great deal um, that notion means a lot to me and I, I think everyone w wants to know what that kind of the kind of completion that you get from love that makes you feel when you're with that person that you don't need anything else and um, that's at the heart of this story there's a lot of politics in the story of the expulsion and Acadia and definitely that's a huge part of this but I think the heart of it for me is the nature of that feeling of uh, belonging with another person to the point where you're inseparable and just the, the notion of what that is even though it's probably not even realistic it is something we all crave we all want to be loved like um, Evangeline loves Gabrielle we all want to be loved like that and we all want to love someone like that you know, um, it's not maybe realistic, but it is, that's why we write poems and why we write songs. And uh, clearly that's endured since the first time we could put a pen to paper. So for me, that's what it is. Absolutely. I mean, the, the most uh, current um, vibration that I felt is the, the refugees. Um, the Syrian refugees, um, who, who is taking them in, who is rejecting them, and that's what the Acadians were. And funnily enough, it was, uh, it was the Americans who were the good guy in this story, because they, they accepted the Acadians uh, and the French in Louisiana, um, but they were kicked out of Canada and just dispersed down the, co the eastern coast of the United States to, to fend for themselves. And though they did meet with hostility in some places, certainly, um, uh, by and large, uh, they made a new life for themselves in that country, and um, that's what this whole continent is about, is about making a new life for yourself, about trying to create the home that you want um, in sometimes a hostile environment. It's really out of my hands, you know. I mean, what's been amazing about this is I actually put it away um, several years ago, and uh, it was m my friends and colleagues who'd been part of workshops that said, you can't let this go, and they championed it. And it's people like Annie Allen at the uh, Charlottetown Festival, Adam Brasher, Bob Baker, um, who, who really did the work um, involved in bringing this to the stage, getting it past the board. <coughs> you know, the board doesn't want to hear that you're doing a new Canadian musical. Um, rightly or wrongly, probably wrongly, um, but I understand why they don't want to hear that. But so the amount of political goodwill that's nothing to do with me is just people believing in the peace. So if people continue to believe in the peace and think that 
if they do the piece they will meet with success, then it will, it will carry on, but that's not up to me. Yeah, absolutely. I see no reason why I couldn't play uh, Broadway. I think the American people would actually love the story even more because more Americans, when you say the, the poem Evangeline, way more Americans will go, oh yeah, I know that, than Canadians. Um, so, and it was written by an American, you know, Longfellow. Uh, so it was very popular in America in the 1800s, the poem. Um, that's what, why it became famous, is because of Americans reading it and buying it. <coughs> so I think the Americans would warmly receive it. But again, you know, um, outside of having your own $8 million, yeah, you know, it, it ain't going to happen until someone with $8 million says, yes, I want to do that. I'm directing a show in Toronto right now called The River. Uh, I'm the artistic curator of a little theater called the Coal Mine Theater. Um, and then I'll be uh, uh, directing at Soul Pepper Theater, Jitters, Canadian play by David French, a remount of a production I did about five or six years ago.